Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. He's going, what about me? Yeah, what yeah, about you? Him? You're in there too, you're the most famous skeleton on the internet. So right now we're gonna talk about the top seven ways to fix most chondrochondritis and Tietze syndrome, uh, syndromes. <laughs> plural, um, plural. Exercises and treatment. Now these are very similar ailments, actually. They're, they're, they're kind of, present themselves the same way. They're just in a slightly different anatomical Area. location. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and now Brad, you've had this, so this is good because we can get some personal experiences sure. here. But what we're talking about is kind of a dull, or it could be sharp pain. Was mm -hmm. your sharp? No, it was more of a dull, and going towards sharp, but never It's on the sharp. front chest wall, mm -hmm. and it, it can radiate to the back or the abdomen or to the arms or shoulders, but um, it often is increased pain when you take a deep breath mm -hmm. or cough. Sure. Um, and what's the first thing we're going to recommend if you feel pain like that? Right. Chest pain, if you, rec if you call it anybody, I, I call a doctor, I said, I got this pain, can I come in for physical? Immediately they suggested or highly recommended or just said, get to the emergency room right now. We've got to check your heart. Yeah, in and other you, words, you don't mess around with right. this. You get in chest pain, you go in. Right. I mean, we don't want you thinking, oh, I have costochondritis, so I don't need to go in. No, you go in. Listen to Bob and Brad. Right. After you go in, they hook you up, they assess your heart, and they say your heart is healthy, then you can come to these. Right. And by the way, you better listen to us on this point too. <laughs> if you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every, do every day, day, every day. And also go over to Facebook and like us because Brad and I Nobody likes us, so we got to get some people to like us, right, Brad? Well, Bob, and we're working at it, but yeah. we got we got this guy. Yeah, Napoleon, Bonaparte. Yeah. So Bonaparte. here we go. Well, where's the pain at? Generally, with Tietze syndrome, it's on the second and third rib. Now you're gonna focus in on here, but Lottie, this is a really good representation because right here you can see this lighter stuff is actually cartilage, and the white stuff here is bone. Sure. So where the bone meets the cartilage, that's usually where the pain is at. Mm -hmm. In Tietze syndrome, it's usually the second or third rib. So it's up a little higher. Yeah, it's, it's way up here. And in, in costochondritis, it's the fourth, fifth, and sixth ribs right in here. Right. So a lot of times the way to ex actually determine whether or not you have it, you just go ahead and, and you come up to, and you're gonna go ahead and push on the ribs like this. Now it's interesting with Brad, he's had this a number of times. You are a little more sore on this side, aren't yep. you? When I push here yep. versus pushing here. Right, yep, and if you're kind of rub back and forth, like right in there, which is right where that, that um, junction, junction is. is, it's clearly more tender on my right side, and that's where I typically feel that, that pain and symptoms, but. Uh, and a lot of times with TT syndrome, what you might have is actually feel swelling in there too. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why you feel swelling with that one and not costochondritis, but anyway, my niece has this, or we believe she has it. Okay. And she went in, got checked out, and uh, so I want to do this video for her. This is for Christy, Christy. high-powered exec. She's just oh. a, she's young, but she's, she's, she's a go-getter. She's a go-getter. Yep, yeah. so let's start off. We're gonna talk about why, uh, why, the, why we're gonna do the treatments we, we're gonna do. Now your rib cage expands and contracts, and it moves up and down yeah. kind of like a bucket handle. So it goes up like this, that's not that far, you know, but it, it moves up and down like this. So this rib cage moves up and down like right. a bucket handle. So, so the, the handle represents? A rib. Right, it's actually yeah. shaped like it, and then the bucket would be kind of represents your chest cavity. So, so there's a little pivot point here and a pivot point in the back. So there's a, the, the rib has to actually move at this junction and then where it connects to the vertebra. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So nice. Now the problem is, I need that oh, a little, right. little bit. The problem, and this is the theory by a New Zealand therapist, and I, I, I there's, there's a lot of good therapists in New Zealand, by oh, the way. Oh gosh, yeah. Mulligan right. and and uh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie came from that area, right? Right. Or was he? Yeah, he was in New Zealand yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, of course. So anyway, the theory is that you, the the rib may have become a little bit uh, adhesed down in the back. So can you see this? If this is a little bit tight down here, back in the back here, what, when this comes up, all the movement's gonna occur at the front. And, and that little excessive movement is gonna cause it to get irritated. All right. So if this is fixed down, this one's doing all the movement, it's, it's over moving and it's, it's getting irritated. Right. So It'd be like if your elbow 
couldn't bend, and you'd have to do all the motion with your arm, your, your shoulder would get real irritated exactly. because you couldn't do normal movement. Well, it happens in the back. They fuse the back, uh, and so you can't have any movement here. Then it gets hyper uh, movement at the next level, right. mm -hmm. and so that's very common. So we need to, number one, we need to loosen up the, the ribs on the back. Sure. So here's a number of ways we can try to do that. One is you can actually, you're going to take... Now you can try a sock. I, I rolled up four socks here. And what you're going to do, if you mind coming over here, Brad, we're going to get it right into that area where, you know, the three, four, or second, and two, uh, two, two and three, or three, four, and five are right around in here because the, the bottom of the scapula is seven. Mm -hmm. So if you put a sock right in between the shoulder blades, you're going to be in about the right spot. Now, if you use a sock, you're going to have to probably lay on a hard floor for this. Right. So it's, it's not going to be over the spine, though, off to the, between the blade and the spine? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's okay. not, a, not right over the spine. It's kind of a little bit over to the side. So you're going to put that in place. So I'm going to put that right be in that area, and I'm going to lay onto it like this. And then I can even roll up and down a little bit on it. Again, this is probably not enough to, uh, support when I'm on a soft uh, device like this. But when you're on the floor, it it would be enough. Right, on carpeted floor would be probably the best. You could do it on a on a hard floor. And then once you get into position, I want you to just take go ahead and take some deep breaths. Yeah. And make that rib cage work. So now, in it, as a, opposed to using a sock, there's a lot of different devices sure. you can try. Sure. Yep. Um, this is a device that you actually is used for your uh, SI area. Mm -hmm. It's called the pelvic clock. Um, it's, it wasn't designed for this purpose at all, but it actually would work. Right. Now this, this gives a nice solid rubber right. surface, and yeah, that, that really hits it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a that really does the job. So we got a link to this down below. Um, and I mean, but th there's so many things you can try right. without having to. You know, this is an OPTP uh, Nerf ball, but something that's firm, you know, and this is a little bit bigger, particularly if you're a bigger person, the sock might be too small, though the price is definitely right on that. Yeah, I'm not, I, we haven't looked too much into what this ball is for, but I mean, it, right. <laughs> right now we found a use for it. Right. So that actually works out really good. I actually like this one the best yeah, of all so that, far. It's a real firm nerf, yeah. but it's not too hard. Right. Mm -hmm. and that really hits on the spot. So again, we're trying to loosen up the ribs on the back so that you're going to get full motion on each side. I think we spent enough time on that, Brad. Sure. Let's, let's keep moving forward here. Um, the other thing is you can actually, you can just try this. You can lay flat. These are different things you can try. Okay. Um, I, I would not push on the painful ribs, but I'd maybe push a, above and below them. And you can actually just take your thumb and just p go ahead and push on the rib cage and, and try to get a little mo motion there. So is that... So are we talking like right on the rib or between the rib? I'm, I'm all off to the side here and just trying to get a little bit of mobility on the, just, on the whole rib so okay. the whole thing is pushing. Yep. So we're j just getting some movement. Getting some movement, mm -hmm. right. Yep. Boy, okay. oh, Leopold was pretty. This is, this is one that I've tried on a patient already and, and uh, in the past. And it wasn't for costochondritis, but it was for pain around the rib cage here. Mm -hmm. And this was a mulligan technique. But um, I just saw it um, by, uh, the other therapist had recommended it in a paper, and mm -hmm. he didn't mention mulligan at all. But um, So what, what are you going to do? You're actually going to take your, the webs of your thumb here, and you're going to push up. Yep, exactly. And I'm going to push up on the rib cage. And then while I'm pushing up on the rib cage, I'm going to rotate towards the painful side. So for you, Brad, you would do it on your rib cage, and then you would turn to your right because that's where the painful side oh, is, right? Oh, sure. Yep. Now, if the, if this when you do this, it should be pain free. If it hurts when you do it, then it's not good to do. So you might even try going to the not the non painful side if it hurts. Sure. But you're pushing up, so you got to be able to get into your ribs. Right. And you got to be able to push up. Um, so there's some people that might have trouble doing this. So you did this to a patient. I you... went in, I did it to a patient. I did it for them. Mm -hmm. and, and it actually, this was something they had had pain for quite a while, and it actually took it away. Right there? It really, yeah, it was a miracle. I mean, yeah. It well, did, were, no, it worked out really good. You were walking pretty tall that That's day. right, I was, I was. <laughs> Another one, Brad. Mm -hmm. um, let's just, do you mind one of the poles there? 
short one or the long one? Doesn't matter, either way. Well, let's try this one. Okay. Um, you can do this, you can do this with a pole, without a pole. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate towards the painful side or non-painful side, but either way I want it so that it doesn't hurt when you rotate. So if you go to the painful side yep. and it hurts, Try the non-painful side first then. Try going the other way. And what you're going to do is you're going to give you a really good posture. Yeah. Really, you really got to be totally erect posture. But you're going to just give a little overpressure like this. Now you can. This, could, could you go like this to lock You could go like up? that. Yep. I know that's what I like to do to keep the thoracic yep. area locked up. You could also up. go like this. Sure. You could, if you, you could not use anything at all. You can go ahead and just put your... Your arms in this position, uh, one's making a fist, one's grabbing over the fist, and I'm going in toward the non-painful side or the painful side, whichever way, and you can just give yourself a little overpressure. And this helps loosen up the back and the ribs at the, that level. And, and I think that one you could even try seated so it would lock your yes, pelvis. Yes, you could. Good point. Brad. That Very way your pelvis point. won't roll. You'll get a little more emphasis. I know we keep you around for something. Well, right? of course, Bob. I'm trying to remember tidbits and pearls. Um, do you want to get the pier wave ready, Brad? And yeah. I'll, I'll show a different oh. one right now while we're oh, let's let's get, get these, these out, out of the way. Yeah. way. Another one is you can actually do rotations laying down like this, and you can actually rotate over like this and you're actually rotating the back too. Sometimes you actually bring the knee up like this and go way over. I'm keeping my shoulder down on sure. this side. But again, we're just doing a, we're trying to get some, all these should be pain free. Sure. I don't want this to why, bring the pain on. Why don't you on. go the other way, Bob? Quick. Sure. So you can see his hip here is really coming off, but the but shoulder. The sh all that's giving uh, more mobility to the rib cage and to the back. Sure. So. Yep. Um, you can try the pier wave because they talked about you could try massaging the muscles in between the ribs. Um, and now Bob had mentioned using the the pointer. Well, I'm not gonna because that's pretty aggressive. You want me to try it? You, uh, yeah, I'll try you can it. go ahead and try it. I'm gonna use a, the soft one because that works it pretty good. I, I, Bob is gonna be brave. Go ahead. He thinks it's gonna be too aggressive. Maybe it is. I haven't tried it myself. Maybe we should prepare a little bit more for these videos. <laughs> Brad and I, you know, we see patients full time yet, so we, we got a, a lot of work to do. Yeah, it's aggressive. It's not, it's not awful though. You know, you'd have to know kind of how the ribs work, because I mean, because you, right. you want to get between. You want to get between the ribs. Yeah. yeah. No, I it, it, actually I think you could do it. Gently. Let's see. Gently. <laughs> Come on, you I big like baby. I like the other one better. All right. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's something you could try. And the last one I'm going to show you, Brad, is actually you can you can stretch the rib cage just even bending over like this sure, and take yep. deep breaths while you're doing it. But uh, also you can use like a, a rolled towel, a rolled sheet, or you could use a foam roller. And you go on to the non-painful side. So my painful side's here. Sure. And I'm going to stretch it like this. And it's really can you see how that's really stretching that rib cage out? Oh yeah. And take your deep breaths yeah. while you're doing this. We're getting that arch over this way, and well, if I could give a little massage with this pull, that'd really well. They, it up right, too. Take that pier wave in there. So <laughs> anyway, we're running long here, Brad. I'm going to go ahead and let's cut her off. Okay. Thanks again for watching. Good luck, Christy. <laughs>